Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. Today we're going to be talking about Zarya, a very popular hero at the moment with how good she is. So this is a video going over some tips and a couple of mistakes when it comes to improving on Zarya and being able to carry games as this hero. To do this, I got the help of Canadian, who is a top 500 Zarya player and is just an expert on the hero. The gameplay in the background is a friend of his who is also a very good Zarya called Leprechaun and you can check out all the details of both of them in the description below. But let's get started. So we'll start with introductions first. Who are you and why should people listen to you when it comes to Zarya? Uh, hi, my name is Canadian. I was a Grandmaster Zarya main for many seasons. Uh, I haven't really been playing much, but I make a lot of educational Zarya content. I have a ton of Zarya guides ranging from what sort of playstyle she has, to advanced tips, to all the common mistakes and how you can fix them. And I also do a ton of Zarya VOD reviews on my stream pretty much every week and there's over a hundred of those available on my YouTube channel. So I make a ton of Zarya content and I always enjoy you know, helping people improve with the hero as she is my favorite character in the game. This video is all about sort of providing tips for people that not only want to improve on Zarya and to be, you know, moderately okay at her, but also to be at that level that you can physically carry games is sorry because she's one of those heroes that in the right hands you can have full control over a game if you can get all those things sorted before that though we need to talk about sort of a big mistakes i suppose that you're going to see coming out of zarya players of all different ranges like what do you feel are the biggest mistakes that zarya's make before we go over the general tips and tricks that people should be implementing yeah, so um, I made a video on like the most common mistakes and, you know, even watching lots of Zarya game play recently, it's still kind of the same ones. Um, so one of the bigger mistakes is definitely, you know, not utilizing Zarya's ammo. Zarya's got a decently long reload at 1.5 seconds and you'll see a lot of players will either, I mean, you know, not throw out one more grenade before they reload or they'll fire like two grenades in reload or they'll be spending a lot of their ammo trying to like hit a Pharah or like a Widowmaker or something, you know, and those sorts of situations you really want to just dump that ammo into enemy shields or enemy tanks and then reload because whenever you're reloading you're sacrificing potential alt charge and that alt charge can make the difference between getting you know your graviton right in a clutch situation or dying at like 98 99 percent um you know target selection with zarya is very um, tricky you basically you know when in doubt go for the tanks and if a high priority low h like sorry squishy target you know kind of mispositions you can you know switch onto them and, and melt them but for the most part you, you can't really be going past the enemy front line to you know get to that back line you know it's very situational but that's just kind of a general um thought process to you know who and what you should be shooting so a second big mistake is with ryan and brigitte being very popular right now a lot of times they will kind of bait zarya into using her projected barrier on them even though your ryan and brigitte aren't really like committing to a fight so like a common thing you see is ryan will like walk up to the enemy ryan and he'll like swing his hammer twice and then your Zarya will, as Zarya, you respond like, oh, my Ryan's vulnerable, he dropped his shield, and then you bubble him, but your Ryan was really just kind of, like, threatening, not actually trying to, like, make a play, and then you'll bubble him, and then the barrier's down. Now, this is a mistake because you, like, you want the barrier to be more than just, like, a kind of, you know, peacock feathers, I guess. Like, you want it to really be part of something better whether it be like saving a teammate or like assisting an engage like for example if the enemy zarya you know bubbles her ryan in a situation we described like her ryan walks up swings twice and then stops and you didn't now you as zarya you have your barrier and they don't and your ryan could now potentially pin their ryan and and there's nothing that they can do to stop it your barrier will stop the brigade is done they don't have projected barrier and you can make a play off of your projected barrier versus the other zarya can't so that's the kind of you know adaption i'd like more zarya's to use because and this applies to brigade too brigitte's will like walk up and stun and whip shot and then they'll instantly fall back they're not really committing like you can tell when a brigitte commits when a ryan commits because they are even they keep going forward after taking like 200, you know, 100, maybe Brigitte can't take 200, but after taking like a chunk of damage. And the, the tip here is that your Ryan and Brigitte, they can take a hit or two. They're not going to die instantly. Brigitte can, of course, die instantly like a Widow headshot, but for the most part, um, they're going to be okay to take, you know, 100... 50 damage or so so you can be aware of zarya be you know paying attention to your tanks to see you know what they're doing and 
if they need the bubble, of course, give it to them, but they don't need it the instant they, you know, swing their flail or their hammer. Nice, and I guess now let's go over the tips you have for people that are wanting to improve and actually trying to carry games as Zarya. Um, communicate as much as you can on Zarya. You know, letting your Reinhardt know or your Brigitte know, or just, or let's say just any ally you're comboing with, you know, the status of, of your barriers is so important, right? If you're Reinhardt, you bubble him, and then he's not paying attention, he thinks it's available, then he goes for that, like, super awesome pin, and he's, you know, he's gonna pin Brigitte or something, but then he dies, and it's like, oh my gosh, where's the bubble? You know, he maybe wasn't aware that he got it, and, you know, that's kind of a mistake on his part, but what you can do to help him is, like, hey, Ryan, I just bubbled you, it's up in five seconds, or, you know communicate what you want to do with the Graviton even. Graviton is a such important ultimate, especially in the current meta with Hanzo and a lot, a lot of combo partners, also like Farah. And to, you know, tell your team, hey, this next fight, I'm looking for Graviton. Reinhardt, I'm saving my projected barrier for Farah. You know, Farah, let's get in position to combo. Like that sort of, that like brief uh, co um, exchange goes a long way into making your Gravitons go from good to great. And more Zarya's just kind of gotten the habit of saying exactly what they're thinking with their Gravitons, they'll probably see, you know, an increase in Graviton success rate. Now, the, the second to last tip I want to talk about is to stop worrying about average energy. Um, this is something that, you know, maybe doesn't apply to the best of players because they have really honed in on how they want to use their barriers. And I'll go into that in the next tip. But for the most part, being... Uh, having a high average energy doesn't really have a lot of context in the game like if you bubble all the time and you're at 80 energy but you're but your team keeps dying because they don't have the protection of your barriers and you just run away as Zarya because you don't want to <clears throat> you don't want to die and you know lose your charge sure you're going to be at a high average energy but you're losing every single fight it's okay to be zero energy because at any point as Zarya with two good barriers you can instantly jump to 80 and at 80 energy, if you just farm with personal shield, you'll decay from 80 to 60 because it's two energy per second. Personal shield is a 10 second cooldown. And then one more personal shield that's high quality will put you right at 100. So you don't need a lot of barriers to be high energy. You just need good barriers to be high energy. And the final thing I want to talk about, and this is um, a little bit biased towards my personal preference in Zarya playstyles, is to be more reserved with your projected barriers. So um, t too long didn't watch. Basically, in my opinion, there are two main Zarya playstyles. You have the very carry, 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 all energy, all the time styles, where those sorts of players will use their bubbles as basically on cooldown to just farm energy all the time during a fight without really any regards to the context of the fight so they can be high energy carry the game build that graviton and i can't argue with the results of that playstyle you see a lot of very high rated you know even professional players play that way and they you know they see success with it so like it's my personal preference i don't like that playstyle but i can't argue with the results there are plenty of top 500 zarya's pro zarya's that play that way now you're farming energy mainly with your personal shield and you want to hold that projected barrier you know during a fight to really help your teammates so my personal preference is you hold the projected barrier because someone on your team is going to need it now even if you have completely competent teammates that can carry themselves the barrier is still going to be helpful because you'll help them carry the game and if you have a team that is completely incompetent and they can't do anything your barrier will still be helpful because you'll help a teammate that made a mistake and you'll be able to bail them out of that situation. So in both situations, in my opinion, you'll still get value out of that barrier and you'll still get the energy from the barrier at the same time enabling a teammate versus just using the barrier to get energy. So those are kind of like the main tips that I have for uh, aspiring Zarya players. I guess finally then, just to finish on real quick, what kind of things do you really want people to bear in mind much more? And where can people find more of you and the other stuff that you do uh, surrounded Zarya? So yeah, one thing I really want to highlight in terms of Zarya gameplay is that disconnect I talked about where people don't seem to realize that when you enable your teammates with projected barrier, you will also get energy 
from that, right? A lot of players think that the only way to get energy with Zarya is to farm it, right? To use a barrier to just to catch, you know, random damage to get their energy. But if you use your barrier to react to the enemy team, you know, react to that Doomfist diving in, react to your Reinhardt getting pinned, etc. That is a great way to get energy, and it's twofold. You're both getting energy, just like you want, and you're also... Um, protecting your teammate or enabling your teammate if they're like making a big play. We talked about how Graviton is a game-changing ability, but so is Projected Barrier. Projected Barrier is game-changing as in its own right. You know, when it's overtime and it's just you and, you know, Farah on the cart and, you know, you don't have a grab, you're far from it, you whiffed it, whatever, and your Farah's building up that barrage and there's four enemies around, like it's 2v4, you have no right wooding this, and your Farah, you know, in a Hail Mary, she goes for that barrage and you come out with the barrier and you enable her to kill, like, all four people, you know, that feeling is so good. It's why I love Zarya so much. So, um, to, to answer your question on where people can find me, you know, if people People want to see all of my Zarya guides, Zarya VOD reviews, Zarya Overwatch League analysis. All that stuff is on my YouTube channel at YouTube, uh, jw.canadian or just Canadian if you want to use the search bar. And if you want to see any of the stuff that I do live, which is uh, viewer VOD reviews, Overwatch League Zarya VOD reviews, um, I do those at twitch.tv slash Canadian. And if they want to find out when any of that stuff's happening, when new content drops, when streams go live, they can also join my Twitter and my Discord. Uh, my Twitter is at at Canadian and my discord is uh, the otter den and if you want links to all that stuff you know they should be below this video and if you get lost they're below all of my videos as well thank you so much ryan uh for having me on overwatch central i always enjoy doing this podcast and good luck to everyone playing zarya she's super 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 fun and whatever uh, play style you guys choose i hope you guys enjoy the hero and that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. You can check out all of the details of Canadian and Leopard Chan in the description below if you want to check them out. Let us know what you think of the video. Bit of a different format than usual. So thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.